Hello and welcome to the 10th iOS tutorial. In this tutorial, we will review what we've learned in these nine tutorials and we'll clear the stuff that I said I will mention uh, later. So you will see all the uh, subjects that we did not cover because at that time it was just confuse you. But right now I just decided to put the review session and explain everything that I promised and for example like warning and errors why we use non-atomic or strong how we can import files and why do we use self and the dot notation for example self dot something or the name of the method dot something and also the important thing is model view controller and which is the design pattern of JTC. so we have a lot to learn let's go on you may have noticed before while we were programming and writing code sometimes we had some warnings so let's create some of these warnings for example I want to define an integer and name it my int and put it equal to zero so as soon as I finish the compiler give me a warning by showing this little triangle if I click on it it will highlight that line and it will show the description and why we have a warning. It says unused variable my int. It means that we have not used this integer or variable. So, uh, once we use it, this warning will go away. So this is a cool description. Sometimes we will have more description and it will not fit on one line here. If you just hover it, you can see the full description of that warning. Same thing for the errors for example if I type something here as soon as I finish it will show me a little stop sign <laughs> call it stop sign it's an error and again if I just click on it it will highlight it and it says use of undeclared identifier it means that it doesn't know what is actually we don't know even what is this so if I just delete this and I want to run the program it will run the program because it's just a warning but it's not a good practice to run the program with warning your program should not have any warning at the end so it, you better fix the, all of the warnings and then run your programs but if you have some errors the compiler would not allow you to build the program and says build failed so you have to fix this issue and then go to so. For example, if I have uh, multiple errors and warnings, uh, as I mentioned in third tutorials, you can see, go to this tab, see, this is a navigation, and you can come to this tab and see all of the errors and warnings here. See, right now we have one warning. If I double click on it, it will open up the class and I can fix it over here. But since we have it on the screen, let me just fix it by deleting. Sometimes you want to put something under your code that uh, you can uh, easily access that part of the code. For example, you have hundreds of classes under your project and you want to easily access it via this little tab here. So uh, we want to force the compiler to give us a warning. If I just get rid of this warning, I can just go ahead and put say pound and warning and some description for this don't forget this line and it forces the compiler to give us a warning and I can ac easily access it from this tab over here so you can force the compiler to give you a warning it's just a useful method next subject that I want to talk is about non-atomic if you remember in the fourth tutorial I promised that I will talk about non-atomic and strong which you have for properties what does non-atomic mean it means that it's not thread safe what is thread the application is running on one thread if we want to have another thread it would be the second thread so it's not thread safe if we use at some property so we will not go to that scope I just want to make sure that you understand what does non-atomic means well, th since we are 
working on just one thread, it's okay, and we always use non-atomic here. What does strong mean? Objective C is using auto-reference counting. It means that you don't have to worry about uh, memory leaking for um, the objects that you create. Uh, it will count the objects for you and then uh, once you are not interested more for that object, it will remove that object for you. So it's all automatic. When we say strong, it means that uh, until I strongly point to that object, don't remove it. But when you say weak, it means that I'm not interested in this object. If anybody else interested, just keep in this keep this object in the memory or hip. So we use always for this property for NS array, NS string, NS dictionary, and all of these we use strong. Strong. I will show you later on once we start doing some UI elements like IB Outlet. I will talk about it. Don't worry about this name right now. But we will use weak for instead of a strong. So just right now, I just want to show you NSRA, NS string, all of the foundation framework, anything that you define is just use strong. But for UI elements, we will use weak, like IB Outlet like buttons, anything else we'll use weak. Our next subject is about import. Uh, if you want to import any class or any framework, you should use pound import. So for example, if I want to import this app delegate uh, to my class, first of all, uh, for all of the class that you want to import to other class, you just import that h file. So I have to just import that .h file and automatically it will import that .m file. The header file will import the implementation file. So we just say import and then the name of the class. For here it's app delegate and it just gives us and that's it. I just imported this class. If I want to add a framework to this class, we can see the sample in .h file and it's see it just it's a framework which is UI kit and you can see uh, the frameworks here if I zoom in you'll see UI kit framework and the way that we import we just import all of the framework it's fully optimized you may think that you want to add the things that we are using in our class but um, always we import the full framework and, and don't worry about the optimization because it's all optimized and it's built for this. And that's all for import. If you watch previous tutorials, you may have noticed that we use self. And when we do, you, when we use self, when we not using self. So let's define a property here. It's just a property, non-atomic, strong, and it's just an NS array type. And we want to call it. We said that we uh, put self at the beginning and then the name of the property which is my array and this is all for properties so if you define a property and you want to call it in your class you have to use self but if you define a local variable for example we just say ns string and we call it uh, str equals to, for example, one hello. And you want to call it later in the code. I have to put, yes, I forgot to put that sign. <laughs> okay, if you want to use this string later on in your code, you just have to put the str. And you don't need to. Um, want to add another one so another value for this and this time world and then close it and that's it so we don't need to use self when do we use self all for properties
and if you're familiar with Java, self is more like this in Java. The other use of self is for the time that you want to call a method. Let me read of these variables and these methods. And for example, if you have a method called and it's not returning anything, so it's void. And it is my method. And inside of this method is nothing. We just want to define some method. If we want to call this method, we just have to put the open bracket and then self and the name of the method. Close bracket. Close bracket. So this is how we call a method inside of the class. You just put self and then the name of the method. So this is the second use of self in Objective-C. Also, we don't need to use self for uh, instance variables. I said we don't need to use for local variable. It's true for uh, instance variable. If we have an instance variable here, like nsString, and we call it my string here, and then anywhere in our class, if we want to use it, we just put my string, no self at the beginning. So self is just for calling the method or uh, using the properties. Next subject is about important fact in Objective C, which is dot notation and square bracket notation. Let's see what's going on in dot notation. For example, when we put self dot something or a method dot something. So let's define an a string and call it my string as a local variable and have a value of although it's a string, but I just put number three inside of this string and as soon as I put my string and dot it will give me all of the available methods inside of the NS string so dot is just uh, having access to all of the available methods um, of that uh, variable or that method so here I just want to use int value I want the int value of this string and I want to assign it to an integer. So I put int and my number, my number one, I call it my number one, is equal to this. So what it basically does is just get this string and return an integer value of this string and assign it to my number one. So dot we did this by dot notation so we want to do the same thing with square bracket notation we will come here and say int my number two is equal open square bracket my string and int value see I didn't use dot notation I just used square bracket but these two are exactly the same. It means that number one is exactly equal number two and both of them are equal to three. So dot notation and square bracket do exactly the same thing but sometimes um, we use dot notation and sometimes we use square bracket for the beauty of code and uh, most of the time I use dot notation because it's much easier to read um, but sometimes we have to use square brackets but this is the whole point of using dot notation and square bracket sometimes we, we use just put self like the previous example self and the name of the method inside of the square bracket so dot notation and the square bracket basically doing the same thing sometimes we cannot use um, uh, one for another but most of the time it, it's true and we can use it okay the last subject that I want to talk in this review session is about design pattern in Objective-C and um, the prerequisite of this course is just knowing the programming languages if you're familiar with any programming language they have the design pattern for 
their programming and the design pattern for Objective C's MVC, which is Model View Controller. The description of this uh, MVC in Objective C uh, is uh, a little bit complicated, but uh, just focus on the concepts, not the words that he is using. The uh, like target action, like outlet, I will explain everything about uh, the communication between model view control. I just want you to understand the concepts and how do we use model view controller. So just watch this video from minute 1418 until minute 26 and I put the link below uh, on the description of this video so you can watch this video and feel free to watch the full episode but you man don't understand all of the words that he's using but uh, that's fine totally fine we will explain everything that he's talking about in and uh, through the time and that's all for this tutorial make sure that you understand all of the things that we and uh, taught in these 10 tutorials and if you have any questions, put it comment as below or any other videos, I will respond as soon as possible.